If we square a number and then take the square root, it's the same as taking the absolute value of the number. And this property states here, for any real number a, the square root of a squared is equal to the absolute value of a. The principal square root of the square of a is the absolute value of a. And let's take a look at an example that illustrates this relationship. If we simplify the radicand in this radical expression, negative 3 squared results in a positive 9, and the principal square root of 9 is 3. To illustrate this property then, involving the square root, our a, for this particular example, is a negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and that was the answer that we got when we simplified this radical expression. Exactly what this principle is stating. Let's use that to simplify the following. It tells us assume all variables represent non-negative answers. And here we have a quantity underneath the radical that is squared. That principle that we just had, if you have a quantity squared, it's equivalent to the absolute value of that variable underneath the radical or the term underneath the radical. So our answer here would be square root of something squared is that quantity. If we want to be precise, we can express our answer in the absolute value, but with the instructions telling us assume that the variables are non-negative, we could also express our answer as the absolute value of 8a is 8a. Likewise, in this next example, we have terms that are each squared, that we're taking the square root, the principal square root of these values will be the absolute value of each. And assuming they're non-negatives, we could simplify that and say our final answer is AB.